Newsflash, everybody, gun control isn't about guns, it's about control. The more time that goes by after the terrible mass murder in Uvalde, the more damning details emerge that are enraging us more every day. You may have even heard that a desperate mother was actually restrained by a police officer outside of the school, or that a father tried to rally support for charging in while the authorities stayed outside as the shots continued to ring out. But possibly the worst story emerged earlier this week. We learned that a local man witnessed the Uvalde shooter crash his car, and when he stepped out to check on him in the aftermath, he was quickly met with gunfire. After escaping to safety unharmed, the man got his own gun and returned to the scene prepared to fight off this shooter. Instead, he was actually met by a, a police officer outside the school in order to stay back and shut up. That's an exact quote. This disturbing story is an example of the failure of gun control policy, where the government strips a good person of the ability to defend themselves, or in this case, to defend young, innocent school children. In contrast to what we saw in Texas and what the corporate press and Democrat politicians would have you believe, good people armed with their own weapons can and do make a difference all the time. Just last week, a West Virginia woman carrying a concealed weapon shot a man who started firing his own gun into a crowd at a party. Miraculously, no one was hurt, except for the bad guy who was fatally shot by the concealed carrier. Now imagine if someone at the scene had tried to obstruct this good gal with a gun that night. Dozens could have been hurt or killed. That would-be killer actually got his gun illegally. So laws like what we're seeing proposed wouldn't have prevented lawbreakers from getting guns and attempting to commit heinous crimes. They're not paying much attention to the law in the first place. They're criminals. But good people would be prevented from using their firearms to stop them. Gun Owners of America spokesman Stephen Williford grabbed his AR-15 and ran outside barefoot to confront the Sutherland Springs shooter five years ago. And instead of continuing his bloody rampage, the gunman was struck multiple times and forced to flee. None of the people whose lives were saved would want Stephen to have been told to disarm and stay back and shut up. But sadly, these aren't isolated incidences. Imagine if good people with guns hadn't been told to pin down the University of Texas shooter in 1966, or if the assistant principal in Pearl, Mississippi hadn't been able to grab his handgun from his car to stop a school shooter in 1997. To date, not one of the horrifying mass murders in a school has occurred where teachers or staff could be armed. Think about that. By enforcing gun-free school zones and advertising this fact to everyone, we've actually created the largest array of soft targets imaginable for a deranged madman to prey on. And we bragged about having done something when what we've really done is attract these monsters to target our kids. We need to repeal the Gun-Free School Zones Act so that we can allow parents and other passers-by to carry weapons on school property like the man who first encountered the Uvalde killer before he went on to murder those innocent children. And in addition, we should arm willing teachers and staff, a solution that's supported by 81% of police. We need to empower people to be their own first responders because when seconds count, the police are minutes away. Or in the case of Uvalde or Parkland, nearly an hour away. In those crucial moments, lives are being lost. The stories from Uvalde should be a call to action. The fact that the police prohibited good people from exercising their Second Amendment rights in defense of innocent life, like has been demonstrated successfully on countless occasions, is atrocious and a natural result of the anti-gun left's wrong-headed policies. Just doing something isn't an appropriate answer. We have to do something that works, like letting good people protect good people. The saddest part of this is that the would-be armed citizen in Uvalde was an employee at a funeral home and he helped bury five of the victims, including a cousin. Imagine how many more lives could have been saved if that police officer hadn't told him to stand back and shut up. The media is not talking about this story, which is why I have to talk about it today. It's not pleasant, but we need to know about it. And you need to spread the message that there was a good guy with a gun ready to help. and He just wasn't allowed to. That's it for this week. We'll see you next time.